Hi everybody, uh, today I have a teardown of um, a virtual ink uh, interactive whiteboard system. Uh, a little bit a while ago uh, my company moved into a new office and uh, uh, previous tenants left some of their office equipment in the office and uh, uh, I found a whiteboard uh, which was equipped with a virtual ink uh, uh, interactive whiteboard system which is um, uh, a simple system, I think it's, uh, it was uh, first uh, manufactured around uh, 1995 and it didn't really pick up. I mean, uh, it's complicated, it's not reliable, but uh, not many people had uh, cell phones with cameras in 90s. Oh, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't actually remember. Um, and it was in, uh, in, uh, in, in Montreal. So. Um, uh, for that reason, uh, that system uh, had some uh, niche uh, applications. Well, I look online uh, for uh, similar systems uh, on uh, on eBay, for example. It used to be a $700 uh, uh, piece of uh, office equipment, which is now sold <laughs> for $25. So you can uh, you can see that the, this was a very interesting, uh, cool idea, but it, it, it didn't really uh, pick up. Uh, uh, my understanding is uh, nevertheless the design and uh, <clears throat> the principle behind it and the, the device by itself is I found it's quite interesting so here I have a tear down and I hope you that uh, you enjoy it uh, so what is an interactive whiteboard and how does it work um, when I looked at it first time <clears throat> uh, the principles appear to be uh, very simple I believe it, uh, it dated back to uh, one of the designs that uh, was um, uh, developed during the, the 1980s in, uh, uh, at MIT uh, Media Labs. Uh, we all know that uh, first examples of devices like Google Glasses and uh, other interactive uh, um, multimedia devices that came from that uh, <coughs> from that research institution and one of those uh, uh, the things that they designed was uh, an interactive uh, uh, whiteboard system the way it works is, is very simple first of all say you have a whiteboard which is usually square and then uh, what you need to do is to track the the position of the pen when you write on a board so that uh, you can later uh, record the, the movements of your pen and then uh, print it on a, on a printer or show on a display so <coughs> the the method that they use to track the position of a pen is a triangulation in order to do that there are two sensors um, that uh, positioned on a, a top uh, usually it's a top it doesn't really matter uh, what corner uh, a top right and top left corner of the board uh, like this each sensor combines two uh, sensors one is uh, an infrared sensor and another one is ultrasound sensor so if we have a pen Um, in the middle of a board like this and then uh, as, as, as we move it along the board uh, while uh, you know drawing some uh, something on a board at the same time let's say this is this is we're trying to draw a square or something like that so the the position x y of uh, what we need to determine is the position of the pen on a board uh, in this case um, and what we need to do is to send two signals, two pulses that will be uh, detected by both of the sensors and one of, of this, uh, this uh, pulses will be uh, an, uh, this, the pulse of infrared light and another one is, is, uh, is the ultrasound signal so because uh, same it, it's it's sent omnidirectionally in all directions so that way uh, both sensors so if, if the distance between those two two sensors are the same 
and then they will receive both the light signal and the, the ultrasound signal at the same time so you can see here so this is a uh, infrared signal and this is uh, uh, I can show the ultrasound pulse uh, usually well in, in this system it's it's around 40 kilohertz but um, I did some research online and I found that some systems use 80 kilohertz uh, ultrasound signals and so on so these sensors are con connected to a microcontroller board uh, which then has a USB port that goes into a printer um, so how does it work? Uh, every time uh, main principle and disadvantage of this of this uh, interactive whiteboard system is you have to have a uh, use a special pen um, by special pen it's uh, it's a device that uh, well I have it here this is this is a pen um, uh, that comes from that system and uh, <coughs> the main component of this of this pen is this head so if I take this this pencil for example and I load it inside so it will be. So as I write on a board like this, I'm pushing on a pen, and by pushing on it, I press the button that's like uh, that's uh, at uh, located at the bottom of this uh, container. Uh, you can see down there there, there are several buttons. Uh, obviously, this is all designed for the whiteboard pen, which has a uh, bigger. Uh, diameter and that's uh, and that's that's what's going to be pushing on the bu on uh, on the buttons down there. So what happens next is that uh, this head has two transmitters. Uh, there are the four infrared diodes and a single circular uh, ultrasound uh, uh, transmitter. The, the way this, uh, the most interesting part actually is this transmitter. This is a piezoelectric element which is uh, made out of uh, a very thin uh, flexible film uh, which um, are covered by uh, me metallization or uh, two metal layers and the high voltage, uh, short high voltage pulse <coughs> when it travels uh, to this uh, piezoelectric element, it generates a short pulse of uh, um, ultrasound signal. Because the ultrasound travels through and uh, through the air uh, so much slower than the light, by measuring the time difference between arrival of two signals, one is is the, is the infrared signal uh, at this sensor. Uh, so let's say. Um, time infrared arrival and the time ultrasound by measuring the distance we can ignore in this case we can ignore the time it takes uh, for the light to travel from the pen from this photodiodes to the sensor and then we can only consider the time uh, it takes for the ultrasound pulse to reach the, this uh, the sensor and I will show <coughs> how the how they they make uh, the sensor so that it's uh, um, reflects the ultrasound signal right into a receiver so um, by measuring the time difference between we can calculate the distance from this sensor right here to uh, this uh, transmitting head of the of the pan and that will be this uh, distance so let's say this is L1 and in this case, uh, this is will be the distance. Let's call it. Uh, oh, sorry, L two. And um, once we know these distances, we can easily calculate uh, the position x y position of the pen by uh, simple triangulation. And that's it. This is this is how it works. So. <coughs> 
here you can see that uh, here's this here this is the one of the sensors and I will I'll take it apart uh, 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 a little bit later so you can see that uh, this sensor has uh, a reflector uh, this is the plastic reflector that's uh, designed so that the ultrasound uh, when it tra travels along the surface of the board is then focused into the ultrasound receiver uh, this is a this is a, a familiar ultrasound receivers that's those ones usually used by uh, uh, sensors that uh, people like to use with their uh, um, uh, Arduino boards uh, for for uh, uh, small robotics uh, uh, the distance measurements uh <coughs> So the ultrasound signal will be focused by this uh, a cone uh, right into a receiver that you'll we'll look uh, um, at a little bit later. And on top of that, you can see here there is a uh, there is a piece of plastic. This plastic is uh, transparent to the infrared light. And behind this, I will see there you will see two um, uh, infrared diodes. So let's take a, take it apart and see what's inside. This device uh, wasn't really built very well. Um, it kind of have a feeling of this uh, um, kind of student project of some sort uh, that uh, was rushed into production. Uh, well, I don't know. That's just my feeling. But uh, you can see the, the components, the design, um, everything sort of points to, uh, towards it. Um, I have taken a uh, this uh, uh, metal shielding uh, from this uh, from this part right here, and you can see um, the, comp the the sensors that I was talking about. Uh, first of all, uh, well, this is a, uh, this is a, a, a two infrared uh, sensors right here, uh, positioned uh, um, left and right of the from the from the. Uh, ultrasound receiver I see you can, if the camera can can actually focus on them and this uh, infrared sensors are, are shielded and they they placed inside uh, two uh, metal cans that provide the uh, shielding and uh, that's necessary to uh, make it uh, more or less immune to um, uh, all kinds of EMI and in addition to that, they also had this uh, a shielding, which is on the first uh, stage of preamplifier. Uh, it was soldered like this. I had to desolder it. Uh, I, was, uh, I was looking at what's inside, and basically, you know, it's 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 a very very primitive uh, uh, two um, transistors and. Uh, Two capacitors, four resistors. That's all. What's uh, what's in this preamplifier? And um, uh, this section uh, right here. Um, let's uh, first take a look at. Uh, uh, there are two sections uh, on this board that almost completely separate. Uh, this section right here. Uh, it. This one is is uh, a preamplifier. Um, a signal conditioning for. Um, uh, ultrasound uh, receiver and uh, this component like this here you see the pin uh, of the this is the pin of um, uh, from the ultrasound sensor it goes through some filter and uh, um, here is an uh, an op-amp um, I believe this is a LMV this op-amp is L MV eight two two M professional uh, amplifier in a, a Soic Soic eight <coughs> a package, and here's some adjustment uh, uh, trimming pot, and um, this board actually very well annotated. Uh, you can see that uh, they're very detailed. Um, a silk screen and it says uh, right here 
the ground input uh, plus 5 volt power supply input and there are two uh, output signals one for uh, U point S which is the ultrasound obviously and another one for IR which is the uh, infrared so this is the, the ultrasound uh, uh, detector circuit and this is all in this area here is uh, um, designed for infrared signal uh, infrared is, is, is uh, look much more complex it doesn't use any uh, operation amplifiers and I've only looked at this at least at this part right here um, uh, this obviously looked to me uh, like a, um, some sort of a, a bandpass filter uh, there are no uh, comparators or anything else Another interesting thing uh, that I noticed is that um, they used uh, four capacitors. Uh, those are not ceramic capacitors, those are um, uh, film capacitors. These are uh, low ESR capacitors, um, to my knowledge, and uh, a low inductance uh, capacitors. Uh, you can see they look kind of silvery right, uh, right here. I've used um, uh, the slighter bigger version of uh, this capacitor is my own designs and this is when I uh, when I really needed a low ESR a low uh, inductance uh, capacitors that's when I use them and you can see they have a, a kind of silvery look um, because uh, this is a high Q low ESR capacitors I believe that this board um, does uh, uh, some serious filtering right here some reverse engineering of this preamplifier only the circuit behind the uh, behind the um, the shield right here and um, you see so here is the schematics that I've uh, I've able to recover from it um, well <coughs> I looked at these two um, uh, transistors uh, th their dead giveaway that these are uh, transistors is the fact that uh, um, uh, here they uh, have a, a silk screen uh, one is a Q1 and there's a Q2 um, so this ca uh, came out to be uh, sort uh, uh, 23 uh, packages of uh, 2N3904 and uh, Another one I found on this board is also used. So those are the only two kind of transistors that they use on this board. And it's a 2N3906. I think this is the most common uh, transistors you can find um, in the universe. <laughs> in a known universe. <laughs> um, and uh, here are the, I, I've, I've, uh, I've drawn these packages so that, um, uh, to simplify my task of reverse engineering it. And here is here's how, did, if I didn't make any mistakes, uh, so this is what behind the, the this is how the preamplifier for this, um, uh, for the, uh, this infrared um, diodes look like. So there are two diodes, they connected in parallel to each other, and um, here's the Q1, uh, this is a, a 2N3904 transistor, and there's a Q2. Uh, 3906 and kind of look like uh, uh, this is a cascaded uh, design I'm not uh, sure if all this uh, all this the passives right here are, are actually helping uh, uh, have some some kind of uh, also do some kind of uh, uh, filtering as well um, maybe low pass filtering uh, in this case uh, but uh, I believe this is this is this is this is a pretty accurate uh, um, um, a schematics for this uh, a board and the output from this uh, <coughs> uh, from this uh, pre preamplifier uh, section uh, goes into uh, you can you can find it as a as a test point free so they have a quite uh, uh, 
quite a few test points right here on, on the on the opposite side of this board. You can see the test point three, which is an output of this uh, signal. I'll try to uh, <coughs> uh, connect it to a power supply and um, uh, see what the output signal is going to look like uh, from this board and how do they uh, filter out uh, the ambient light. Uh, that's what be interesting as well. And um, the power into this into this uh, circuit is provided through. Uh, two resistors R20 and R5. I believe those are very low value uh, resistors, somewhere around 300 ohms. Um, and uh, this this is the the uh, goes straight from a uh, five volt power supply uh, uh, rail, which I marked here. Uh, this uh, this pin provides five volt input uh, power supply. And uh, here's another test point for power supply, which is uh, TP2 uh, right here. And uh, uh, what uh, infrared output signal is here's TP5. And uh, that's the output of entire uh, board after filtering. We'll be interested to see what's the difference. And uh, I'm not sure, TP11 look like uh, this is the, the, the the test point for biasing of this um, um, operational amplifier. Yes, I think this is the and uh, test point eleven it goes into unpopulated uh, inductor. Uh, there. Are few unpopulated sockets here as well one is uh, this inductor is not populated and you can see this is uh, it says right here it's 250 revision b uh, so this this circuit went through uh, a few revisions as well here i have it connected to my power supply uh, five volts in and uh, i'm going to take a look at uh, uh, what uh, what can I find at one of these uh, test points? Uh, let's see, uh, test point three, which is on this schematics, is this uh, TP3? You can see right here the output of this board, and it shows 0 0.699, 0 0.7 volt uh, DC output, and um, this is. Uh, uh, this is obviously it's quite sensitive to, to an ambient light. Goes down 620, 7616, 620 millivolts, 716. So yeah, so this is the this is a six signal. Um, <coughs> it's uh, it's very sensitive to an ambient light, and I think the output uh, should be uh, should be. Uh, um, I, I should expect uh, the output to be uh, a digital uh, or a discrete output rather than uh, an analog and I think the, the rest of the circuit that processes this TP uh, signal that coming out from this uh, will will filter it, it will provide some kind of filtering and will remove the, the ambient light component out of it. Uh, there's only one way to find out uh, is to try to uh, send some process signal to here and see what's going to be coming out of uh, of the infrared output uh, pin of this uh, this board. This board also comes with an eraser board, uh, which is the bigger board where you push uh, on uh, on top of that uh, an eraser, uh, which has two buttons in here, and uh, there's a, a smaller eraser component which is at front. Uh, all of these boards have exactly the same design, so the uh, there are um, infrared transmitters, uh, two infrared transmitter diodes uh, are here, for example, and there's another one, uh, two infrared transmitters right here. As soon as you push the button, it sends the pulse uh, signals into the infrared transceivers as well as into um, uh, uh, the ultrasound uh, uh, transmitter 
uh, which is broken off here but because I it's easier for me to connect this uh, to power because it has uh, it has these leads I've decided to use this one uh, as a as opposed to, to using a pen uh, because obviously I have to figure out how to how to keep this connected in the same time um, to reach the buttons so <coughs> I have connected this board to uh, 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 my power uh, 5 volt power and uh, to uh, the lead of my oscilloscope and I'm, now I'm going to um, press one of these buttons and that's supposed to send uh, the, the pulse signal into the into the boards uh, we'll have to do something in order to uh, uh, to test the uh, ultrasound signal but uh, here I am uh, pressing it and I'm looking at my oscilloscope so as soon as I press on the button you can see there's a series of, of signals um, that coming out of the of the um, the infrared uh, port of this board, and if we try to trigger on it like that, see if I can look at this signal at higher resolution, and um, let me set a cursor. The source one, so okay. X one, Y one. This is um, this is one volt. This is minus one twenty eight. Trigger it again. So this. So, <coughs> a correct, uh, the probe is, uh, it, this is the correct uh, uh, 10 to 1 probe and uh, you can see that this, this is, um, this is the signal pulse signal that capped at about 1 volt up and then goes down to minus, uh, Minus uh, 120, uh, 1.28 volts. So this is this is what uh, this is what we have for uh, when we press the button. It's uh, um, this is the output uh, for the that we receive for infrared signal. What about uh, the ultrasound? See, I plugged uh, my my oscilloscope probe into the um, ultrasound output from the board and. Uh, well, um, I don't have a, a <laughs> ultrasound transmitter um, um, at, uh, attached uh, uh, to the razor board. Well, let's see what happens if I just clap my hands on top of the on top of the uh, the sensor. <laughs> you see, um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, basically. Um, uh, this is uh, this is the signal that is comes uh, straight out of the um, uh, the sensor board. So you can see one disadvantage that uh, I'm not sure how it's going to is it going to just ignore the signal or not. But if people start clapping during your meeting, <laughs> you're going to you're going to get some uh, a very interesting results. And let me see. Uh, the signal for the yes, uh, this is this signal uh, out of the uh, the the ultrasound is uh, capped at 2.5 volts and uh, minus uh, 1.20 uh, volts um, and negative. Uh, let's do it again. See, now uh, what you're gonna see? Yep. Here we go. Um, so this one, uh, this this. Uh, oh, actually, you know, this time it's uh, it's not been capped, uh, so I'm not quite sure um, why this. Uh, there is a uh, the clipping signal. It's always at the different levels. Uh, maybe perhaps it's not important, but. Um, <coughs> 
here we go we can see again uh, this is the the ultrasound output uh, from the from the sensor board there you go maybe I shouldn't really club this high oh yeah any kind of sound produces some kind of output yep depending on my trigger so this uh, the output signal from the the ultrasound sensor goes uh, it's not uh, really uh, a binary output it's this is a, it's an analog output it goes into a board which you're going to see <coughs> uh, uh, right now I'm gonna take apart uh, the, the 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 microcontroller board and see what's uh, what we can find on it here we just uh, we just looked at uh, the, the signals that coming out of this uh, from the sensor board and uh, you can see how is it connected uh, to a microcontroller board can I disconnect and um, gonna look at this uh, later there's a um, like I mentioned before uh, there's an interesting um, uh, thing about the the piezoelectric uh, ultrasound uh, transmitters that we will look at later so let's take a look at uh, at uh, the microcontroller board here's the microcontroller board it was uh, was it was attached to the board uh, to the whiteboard itself and um, <coughs> here are the, the inputs from the from the sensors um, for whatever reason they use different um, Uh, they use different uh, 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 connectors for for both of the sensors. It also came with this um, with this uh, remote, which uh, allows you to to select. Uh, this one is for uh, uh, I believe this is for calibration. You have to position your pen in the middle of the board, and then you press this button and. Uh, and it shows the the ready signal and this is uh, this is for printing uh, so press this button and you can print and the printer output uh, old school uh, parallel output for this uh, for this board so this is so 90s so here we go i've um, i've look at the board uh, did some looking up on uh, on uh, google uh, for um, uh, for the components that I found here, uh, <coughs> I did uh, some uh, high resolution photos of this uh, board a while ago, about about a year ago, and uh, I completely forgot what I found here. But one thing I remember, and I just uh, going to show it again in this video, is that <coughs> uh, this board was designed by uh, uh, fanboys of uh, Peak Microprocessor because uh, what they see, uh, first of all, here's a big Peak. Uh, right here that's number one uh, you can see there's another peak right here and there's a memory uh, for the bigger one and uh, here's another peak uh, microprocessor and uh, uh, uh -huh. I believe there was another peak microprocessor that I found in this in this board and then also <coughs> Uh, if you look at this uh, at this board, uh, which is the the the, the, uh, the transmitter for the for the eraser, um, uh, this is a peak. Uh, so they use this this peak microprocessor to generate uh, the uh, the pulse signals. And I believe that yes, this is this is the only peak on this board, and. Um, uh, I found another peak inside this uh. Uh -huh. if I take this take this pan apart. Right, so here's a transmitter board uh, for the, the, the pan container. And inside here you can find 
there is another pick. <laughs> it's a Soykate uh, a package, uh, a pick microprocessor as well. So here is this. How many, how many picks have you count? And this uh, sometimes uh, this 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 uh, device usually comes with uh, free pants. Uh, as far as I know, I've, I've looked up uh, uh, when I found the older units. <coughs> All the new units sold on eBay. I found uh, that it comes with three pens. So uh, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six pick <laughs> microprocessors um, in this uh, <coughs> in this you boards alone. Uh, in addition to this, uh, here is um, a Cypress uh, AEN. Uh, 2139 uh, for uh, USB ports right here and uh, there is uh, a Cypex SP3222 uh, uh, RS232 transceiver uh, it's uh, right here and I uh, anything interesting and then there's this this uh, uh, large uh, component here this is DS1868 uh, uh, from uh, uh, Maxim I think uh, this is a digital potentiometer right this is this right here and I think that's this is this is a part of the of the <coughs> um, a board that uh, takes care of uh, the ultrasound signal processing and um, here we have uh, it looks like uh, a 20 megahertz uh, crystal uh, right here another crystal for this uh, big microprocessor uh, it's what uh, I think this is 3.3 uh, megahertz I'm not really sure I need to understand this marking. It's uh, 330. I don't think it's uh, uh, 33 megahertz. I think it's uh, 3.3 or 3.28, uh, something like that. There's another. Oh, there it goes. Uh, so maybe this one is not for for this uh, uh, microprocessor. Maybe this one. This is a 12 uh, megahertz uh, uh, crystal um, right here. Oh, this this could be for uh, for this uh, Cypress uh, as well, because this is on this side of the board. I guess that would be convenient uh, to place uh, components and the crystals on the same side. Uh, some memory and lots of um, uh, 74 series components uh, right here, and uh, that's it. I found that most interesting part of this. Um, interactive whiteboard device is the uh, construction of uh, uh, the ultrasound uh, transmitter well I only have one surviving example of this uh, transmitter from uh, from the uh, the the unit that I have uh, salvaged from the office uh, but this one is is intact and it's it is working so <coughs> How is this uh, built? So what I'm looking at is uh, what I mean. Unlike unlike uh, a con conventional or a usual um, ultrasound transmitters, that uh, um, here I found uh, an example of the uh, the ultrasound distance meter. You can see here is um, a transmitter receiver attached to the same board. Uh, they all look um, uh, like a, a small uh, a transmitter. See if it's, it's marked right here. So here, here, if you look, if you start looking at the transmitter, you see that it's uh, it's it's it has a narrow, uh, pretty uh, narrow a beam from where it expects the the the, the ultrasound signal. It will. It will it will be completely um, death to anything that comes behind it or from the sides. The, the the so it only expects the signal to come from here, 
because in our example what we need we need to transmit at in all directions so if we are uh, again if we have a pen on a board like this in this case so we need to transmit in both directions and we don't know exactly uh, so if let's say if I place the pen here it needs to go right here and then plus of course uh, uh, the person who is using this pen going to to, to rotate so it needs to be uh, omnidirectional so it's need to transmit in at 360 degrees the way they solve this problem is by using uh, <coughs> uh, uh, piezoelectric uh, film and um, so for example if you have a film you can see a piece of film and then we say and on one uh, it's a piezoelectric film it has a piezoelectric properties and on one side of the film we using spattering or some kind of uh, other technique to apply a metallic uh, conductive uh, a layer on top of it then and on the opposite side this is this is our connector two one and on the opposite side you're going to do the same thing you're going to uh, place another conductive layer sort of like the same thing that um, that you see on a PCB board uh, the two double uh, uh, layer PCB board so one uh, one layer is a copper on the top and another one on the bottom I believe this one is uh, going to be a, a thin layer of uh, silver or another material that's uh, uh, this is it's it is a conductive material and uh, it's been applied by using uh, uh, some technique such as uh, spattering so what you can do next is you can wrap this film into a cylinder so you will have a cylinder like this with some gap I have to say and then uh, there are contacts so this is this is how they built they'll build this this um, ultrasound transmitter in this case so <coughs> if I take my multimeter and I try to measure uh, say two resistance between two pins uh, one shows 1.49 mega ohm 1.49 mega ohm and uh, it is 10 10 kilo ohm resistance so I believe 10 kilo ohm resistance is um, the resistance of this uh, of this uh, piezoelectric material although I'm not quite sure about it um, because there's definitely no contact uh, between it but if I try to um, so you see here is um, uh, let me see if my cameras can focus you can see this um, <coughs> this uh, sort of a ring inside it uh, that's attached to a film and if I look at the resistance on the surface of the film oops so there it goes it's completely it's uh, what I got is I got uh, six hundred milli ohm. This is a uh, uh, less than one ohm resistance. So this is these are two conductive layers. Uh, like I said, this is how it's designed. So what uh, what do they need in order to send uh, an ultrasound pulse? Uh, using a, a ultrasound transmitter like that um, oops oh, there's lots of uh, uh, tiny parts came out uh, from there uh, there's a button you can see that this is the this is the button we were talking about uh, these ones are what no okay so these ones are these are contacts um, Oops. 
these are contacts for the for the tip of the pen <coughs> and um, what I find on, on uh, each of this and same same thing is on a razor you have two here's a transformer uh, this is the transformer that looks uh, quite similar to what uh, you would find on a, um, a flash for a, for a small camera or something like this uh, this this uh, transformer uh, most likely used to generate uh, a high voltage pulse uh, of about 300 400 volts so you get uh, uh, so you get a, a, a transformer coil like this and then uh, you have a primary like that where you have uh, 5 volts and um, and this one has let's say 10 turns, 700 turns I don't know exactly uh, uh, how many turns so I need to look at uh, car more carefully at this uh, this transformer uh, right here <coughs> and if we send a pulse signal it will uh <coughs> create a high voltage pulse which is then uh, uh, going to uh, uh, generate uh, an ultrasound uh, pulse uh, using this uh, um, piezoelectric uh, uh, transducer uh, another interesting uh, thing that I found uh, when I'm doing uh, when I was doing some research on internet is that uh, this this transducer also works uh, both ways and in fact um, you can find that um, uh, this type of transducers made by a company that I happen to have uh, uh, one a vibration sensor uh, are made by so this is the this is the company that uh, makes this oops there we go it's called uh, Mies and then this is this is an, another example of uh, um, here here we have a piece of uh, piezoelectric uh, uh, film um, with some weight on uh, at the end so when when this uh, sensor will vibrate it will generate some signals so if I uh, basically I was going to try see if this this will also work both ways but in order to do that obviously I have to remove the the weight so so I'm going to uh, probably purchase another um, a type of this sensor without the weight on top of it and, and try if I can actually uh, use it in order to generate uh, an ultrasound pulses uh, so it's um, uh, they also make uh, uh, transceivers um, like this which are uh, capable of both receiving and transmitting uh, at uh, 40 and 80 kilohertz uh, a range uh, so quite interesting uh, uh, sensors uh, I assume that uh, Virtual Inc. Uh, made their own trans uh, piezoelectric transducer for that uh, uh, interactive whiteboard design. And uh, later, I stumbled upon this website where I've seen a set of uh, piezoelectric sensors, but all based on uh, uh, piezoelectric films. And here you can see <coughs> a one particular item called a pen tip. And if you look, if I look closer, come on. And there you go. Um, so um, you can recognize uh, this is uh, a generic uh, pen tip sensor uh, that probably was designed for one of the later uh, models of similar um, interactive whiteboard uh, devices uh, that were used uh, uh, back uh, end of 90s, uh, early 2000s. I think this, uh, like as I mentioned before, I think this uh, this. Um, technology was completely pushed out by uh, video cameras and um, uh, capacitively sensitive boards and all that stuff uh, but nevertheless it's a quite an interesting uh, piece of history and you can still uh, you can buy this uh, sensors and uh, build your own designs for example if you want to uh, track position of a robot in a room um, that would be a pretty good uh, solution uh, and uh, I believe that will be a low-cost solution as well.
uh, in this case uh, so this is a, a 8 kilohertz version of that uh, of this uh, uh, transmitters clearly it's using the, the, the same design here's the, the piezoelectric film uh, with some uh, metallic uh, spattering on top of it and this is uh, a transmitter receiver version of uh, of this uh, of these devices they look quite similar I'm not sure if you actually can uh, make uh, both uh, to work as a transmitter and a receiver but uh, it indicates uh, here as a, a receiver and this is a transmitter also a piezo uh, piezoelectric film t using uh, this one's implemented as well using uh, piezoelectric film technology and um, uh, they claim that you can also uh, uh, glue this on epoxy to example uh, for example into a pipe or container and uh, in case if you want to um, uh, use it as a as a transmitter for example for a uh, liquid level sensor or something like that well this is all i have for this uh, video about uh, interactive uh, whiteboard device from virtual ink uh, see you later